Good morning, everyone. My name is Lady Kinvara Balfour, and I'm very honored to be here. I've actually been in Saudi already this year doing a series of films with the Wall Street Journal about how Saudi is open for tourism, and I've experienced so much in your beautiful kingdom already, and I'm delighted to be back here. Today, I have an amazing panel um, of really interesting people. I am the least interesting person here, so I'm going to stop talking and start asking them some questions. What we want to talk about today um, is what is the big idea? And before I start, I just want to have a, a raise of hands. Who here is sitting in the audience today thinking, I have a big idea and I want to know how to execute that big idea? Who here has a big idea? We all have some kind of a big idea, whether it's something to do with business, technology, culture, entertainment. That's why we're here. We all feel that we have some kind of purpose. And I know that these panelists here are going to really help us work out how to execute that big idea. What's the next step for us? So I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves, and then we're going to start talking a little bit about what they do and how they realize their own big idea. Amy, do you want to say hello? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I am thrilled to be here. This is my very first trip to the kingdom. Uh, my name is Amy Peck. I have a company called Endeavor XR that I started about 10 years ago when I first saw virtual reality and started to think about what the possibilities are. And now it's sort of all metaverse, Web3. And so my career has expanded into that space. And so what I spend my days looking at is how do we take these big ideas and leverage technology to pave the path to execute on those big ideas. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to talking about the metaverse with you in a bit because it's, it's such a big idea that I can, can't even get my head around it yet. Abdul Hamid, hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Abdul Hamid Charara. I'm the co-founder and CEO of RiseUp. Uh, I'm from Egypt, so I'm uh, very, very honored also to be here in my second country the kingdom. I was actually raised uh, in Saudi Arabia, so it's a real privilege for me to be here. Uh, and basically, Rise Up, what it does, it runs uh, right now one of the largest communities and events for startups at the early stage and the later stage, empowering the ecosystem. Uh, we've been there for around 10 years. Uh, so basically, it started in very, very challenging times and started growing and empowering the ecosystem around MENA and uh, Africa as well. Great. Okay. Well, we can talk about more about that. Dr. Shamim. My name is Dr. Navo Mashamim. I'm the co-founder of Chill Food Center Incorporated in the USA. We work in Europe and also Africa. What we do is that we link food retailers to buyers using our B2B platform. I started this out of my passion while I was seeing my mother find difficulty to get capital for how to do the businesses. And I'm like, what can I do? What thing can I do to change all of that? And it is from that that I was able to start this platform. So I believe that someone has to just look at the situation and see how best can I be able to get out of it, and then you can get going. OK, wonderful. Thank you. So what I really want to ask you, um, Amy, let's start with you. Uh, you had a big idea about a really big idea. How did you start? the company that you, work, what, that you started now, um, and what were some of the biggest challenges you faced at the time? Well, I, like I said, when I first saw virtual reality, uh, you know, my, my background is working with large companies on strategy. And when I first saw virtual reality, I saw so many pathways to leverage the technology that uh, I, I quit the job that I was working with, and I set up a, this consulting and strategy firm. And on the one hand, I was very lucky because uh, we got some clients very, very early on. Um, but on the other, it was very early days for the technology. And so my first experience in VR was just with the developer kit of the Oculus, which is now the Oculus 2. 
Uh, and so it was a very long road and it was very challenging for companies to bring in this type of technology, um, as, especially you know, with you know, security concerns because this was a new device and no one knew how, you know, if they could secure it on their networks. And so there were definitely challenges, but what was really interesting is that the people that came to us also had the same vision. And now that I've traveled around the world, and now that the metaverse has become a thing, right, and everybody understands sort of a, a concept of what the metaverse is, uh, I really see now the growth uh, expanding and the opportunities really expanding. And can we just discuss the metaverse really quickly and put it into context? If you don't know what the metaverse is, what is it? When is it going to start to affect our lives. When do we, when are we allowed to go in it? Like this is what I under, don't understand. When can I get to go in the metaverse, or can I go there today if I sign up? And where do I sign up? Well, you know, depending on who you talk to, really the metaverse is here now, um, in a form. And the metaverse is is not a place. It's it's not a destination. It's really an evolution. It is the spectrum of reality. So it's the way that we're going to interact with data and digital experience. So now, you know, even on your phone, if you're watching, you know, or playing a game on your phone or watching a piece of entertainment, in theory that is a version of a metaverse. But we're going to start to move those experiences off the screens and they will live in the world all around us and it will be accessible either by mobile devices or laptops or eventually we'll have wearables. But the important thing to consider is that it's really just moving from 2D to 3D. And we live in a 3D environment, and yet, ironically, we've taught ourselves to interact with data and entertainment and games on 2D screens. So it's almost like relearning that behavior. Uh, and I will say that it, it's not about just going to the metaverse. It, this is an opportunity for all of us around the world to create this virtual realm that we all participate in, that we all create together. And the hope and the opportunity is to create this virtual global village where we shrink our geographic distance and we engender culture and optimism and empathy. And Abdul Hamid, with Rise Up, you've basically done something similar in the real world. How have you learned, uh, what have been some of the skills you've learned in, in creating communities and getting people together in unison? I mean, you live in a time of real political unrest. It's a hard time for young people, I think, in the world, post-COVID, high prices, um, real political discord that's created by the web and can also be healed by the web. How have you worked to ease that with Rise Up? Sure, that, that's a great question. And I think um, working with entrepreneurs on a daily basis, um, first of all, is very, very inspiring. So for me personally, the drive and the mission I got and the big, uh, big idea was transferred through the community I work with, was the young and ambitious entrepreneurs we work with every day. Um, and I think the most important part was actually envisioning the future because uh, in startups, in governments, in corporates, even in the metaverse, the, if there are no uh, people who are imagining that future, take a moment and think and deep dive and create this first mental creation uh, where we, as then the rest of the community, sort of align on and then head towards that vision. This is the first initial uh, you know, breaking point for any big idea to happen. And then afterwards, you start looking at the, at the whole values of that ecosystem or the community. So basically, uh, what makes us and brings us together? What are the cornerstones? What do we all believe in, in terms of uh, ethics, in terms of uh, values, in terms of everything, that the daily culture that we as a community uh, work at? And then the third part was actually working with other people and building teams and smaller teams because it's very easy to get lost in a very big community. We work with nearly a half a million people in, in our community. So uh, those from the micro, you know, small enterprise towards the big organization, I think uh, the, that community was very, very inspiring in building teams, working together. They all understood that this very big idea to be executed, you need, you need to break it to the smallest bit and move forward. That's really interesting. Shamim, when we talk about rising up, um, you had an idea 
and you've brought it to make it something big. How did you rise up yourself? Well, thank you so much for that question. Um, I believe that we all have to believe in change. Most of the people want to do the same thing every now and then, but we should believe that change is for the goodness of mankind. I can give you an example. For example, during COVID-19, no one knew that uh, there's going to be this virus that has come and it's going to make everybody stay in their houses, every business turn into digital. So it's from this that we realize that we have to change at every stage of our lives, whatever you're doing. Um, while I was still a medical student, I used to tell um, my fellow classmates that, look here, we are learning uh, the surgeries, we are doing all this, but one time, we are going to have assistance of the robots, and they were thinking, I'm just looking at maybe change, I know it may not come to pass, or these things may want to take our jobs, but after some time, we realized that we need them because they're improving the efficiency of whatever we are taking, we're doing. So it's in the same field that most of the young people and all the people out there have to know that if you have an idea, you have to be able to know how can I execute this idea. And if you ask yourself, how am I going to execute this idea? Believe that you're going to do the best out of reach. So if you know they're going to do the best of out of it, so everything you think about is going to be the best. Because when I was starting this, um, the B2B platform that uh, provides buy now, pay later for the food retailers and the consumers and the stockists, people are telling me, you cannot compete with the Amazons. I'm like, but my business model is different and I believe I am the best. I can do it differently. I know this business is having a lot of paper intensive, but I believe in the future we shall have uh, it becoming digital. And when the pandemic came, everything became digital and someone was trying to see what I was looking at in the future. So we, we have to believe in the visions that we have and you believe that whatever you're doing is, is the right thing and having a good team is key because you cannot do everything alone because if you're in company, you're the CEO, you cannot be the CMO, you cannot be the CTO, but having the right team around you can make you rise up and be able to offer what you can to other people. So our company has been able to grow because you're right now in Dubai and looking to scale to other Middle East countries. So I believe it's possible for everybody. I wanted to add as well that just after our talk, we have the Minister of Economy and Planning of Saudi Arabia coming on stage and going to be talking a little bit more about this idea of planning, planning our future, planning our culture, planning our business, planning ourselves. And I think planning is so important. If you have a big idea and you want to execute it, however big it is, um, you know, you do, you have to plan, you have to be forward thinking. And I think fundamentally, you really have to have that self-belief. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of technology in everything that we're doing here, because I know we have, I mean, I come to Saudi Arabia, just everything is big. You know, this is an incredible nation, an incredible place to come. And just this conference center alone is, is just so big and so magnificent and so impressive. Um, and it's great that we're physically here, but I know that you have like the city of the future being built, Neon, which we all hear about so much back in the USA. Amy, how important do you think it is for anyone in business today to embrace new technology? Is technology essential for success? I, of course, as a technologist, I believe so. Um, but I don't think it's a coincidence that all three of us talk about vision. And vision is the most important component. It's not really about the technology. It is about projecting ourselves into a future that we all want and we want from a human perspective because if we build that, the economics will come, especially leveraging this new digital landscape. The digital landscape is infinite. The financial, the profit, all of that will come. 
What we need to do, and this is why this conference is so important in galvanizing a multi-generational approach, is that all of us have a lot of similar visions as humans. But then to really expand on that and then backfill with technology, that's how we do, because there's so much technology at our fingertips and it's not just one technology that will lead us forward. It, it is the metaverse and Web3. It is AI, it is blockchain, it is robotics. It's payments, it's the digitization of our world, but to make our lives as humans better. And if we do that, then we will be successful. And when you talk about humans, as you just said, tell me a little bit about, about what you were saying to me before uh, backstage about the, um, what did you say, you, the phrase that you're looking at? Thinking ahead before, so that we can think oh, faster than AI. Yeah, so, so I, I, I use the term volumetric thinking. And what volumetric thinking is, is and is who we are as humans, is we have a capability to take disparate thought and pull it together into sort of a singular vision. And that's something that will be a very long time before we can code into artificial intelligence. And we have to really respond to the, 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 the world of technology from a human perspective. And what I mean by that is we talk a lot about STEM and that we have to push STEM education. That's important, but I believe in STEAM education and adding the A which stands for the arts and creativity, and it's our imaginations. This is how we build something from nothing. That is one of the, the greatest powers that we have, is to visualize a future that we want for ourselves. And so this concept of volumetric thinking, I believe, is something that will carry us forward. Um, Shamim, have you... Um have you, are you way up to date with your knowledge of technology? And if so, how did you gain that knowledge? Um, always, thank you so much for that. Yeah, I'm just always really interested to see how people are learning and embracing. It's like we're all just expected to suddenly know about AI and VR um, when it's not necessarily taught in schools. And I'm so interested to see how so many entrepreneurs have just embraced it by finding out the information is there. I think a lot of entrepreneurship is about teaching yourself, but how, how did you learn? Thank you so much for that question. An entrepreneur is someone that looks at something and then finds a solution for it. So for a bit of artificial intelligence, um, technology is the way to go. That's why I can best define it. Because in whatever business you are doing, for example, in the business that I'm doing, it's, we are using an artificial intelligence chatbot uh, to link food retailers to buyers using the BNPL. But then, how could this be possible without the artificial intelligence? No, it couldn't be possible, because I couldn't be able to help, um, be able to link someone from maybe from New York to Dubai, to Riyadh, or something. So I believe that technology has come to help us in whatever sector we are in, either in the health, either in the fintech, either in the transport and everything, to ease in the process. Because if we have um, an assistant that is helping us onto whatever we are doing, it will, become, it will come out perfectly. So it's about us, the humans, to embrace the advantages of technology in whatever we're doing so that we can be able to move faster than we had moved. Because we are human beings, and at the beginning of the day, like today in the morning, we, had, we have all the energy, but by the time it reaches 4 p.m., we shall be a little tired which is different from a machine, because it will not be tired. It will maybe just uh, be charged or something, and then it will come back. So we need that assistance in whatever we're doing so that we can bring out the best of whatever we are giving um, to the different communities, to our different customers. So for all the entrepreneurs out there, if you are having a business and you have not yet put technology into it, so this is the right time for you to be able to think of how best can I be able to reach people 
from not only in my country here in Riyadh, but also to other countries. And the only way you can do that is the power of technology, the power of artificial intelligence to be able to scale to other nations and all that. So uh, I believe we should just look at uh, how good it is and then how best we can be able to um, impact it in the different people we are working with, in the different societies. And I was able to teach myself this because of, the, because of what I was going through. I find maybe a challenge here, and I'm like, I think it can be done faster with this. And that's how I was able to um, be able to incorporate the different technologies and having that good team that would help me bring out that in my company. Thank you. Now, we've got six minutes left before the um, next speaker comes on. I wanted to ask now, just at the end, everybody here is extremely successful and has obviously had some challenges along the way. We're here talking about generation transformation. What challenges have you found in what you've done with the generation that came before you and the generation before that? Grandparents and parents, did they show some resistance because they didn't understand what you're doing? Or maybe today they still don't understand what you do. My father has no idea what I do. I have to show him visuals. Um, for him to understand the different kind of jobs that I do because they're so different from the way in which he worked. Abdul Hamid, for example, what, what challenges did you have when you, when you set up what you set up for you, with your parents? <coughs> so, uh, firstly, uh, I was a lawyer. <coughs> and from being a lawyer uh, to an entrepreneur and being raised in a family that the majority of, of the people who are my family had either public jobs or legal jobs uh, was a real uh, pain. And uh, I actually, uh, I remember very well at, for the first five or six years, every single year they've been asking me, what do you do? Um, up until they start seeing media speaking about it or they start seeing, you know, or I show them videos of, of successful of, uh, events that we do or some of their friends start talking to them saying congratulations <laughs> on your, what your son or daughter. Uh, are doing. So uh, this, this change, I think, um, uh, was a really big challenge at the beginning. And I, I, I believe um, I was very lucky to be uh, patient about it. Um, part of what Shamim was talking about is when you really believe in what you do, you, you, you don't look for uh, instant grat gratitude or instant gratification because the real success in this formula is seeing that transformation or that change happen in a few years uh, down the line. And I was very lucky actually that uh, I was able to speak to them um, and ask them to be my mentors in, in the field that I do. So my, my biggest mentor uh, was my daughter, my, was my father who uh, passed away 10 years ago. And he was the one, though he works in the public sector, I, I learned a lot of his skills that he used in the public sector and used them in business in terms of you know, analysis, understanding how systems work, understanding how to deal with people, uh, public speaking, stuff like that. So I, I believe um, uh, we as young people also have this duty and this responsibility to listen, not to hear, to understand the message that our, our other uh, generations are doing because 10 years down the line, I started realizing, you know, and now I have a, a, a beautiful two years old daughter and start thinking differently. <laughs> and I realize that, you know, I understand now where they were worried, what are their worries and those kind of things. In a few seconds, one of the very important things that I think we as, you know, entrepreneurs and dreamers or Hanimun or Hanimin, as, as the term coined here in the, in the kingdom, is to also watch for our mental health during that period because I loved also what both of you talked about, just taking the break in every now and then because technology is always infinite and constant, but we as humans need to sleep, eat, drink, and smile. <laughs> I would, that's perfect, everything you've said right there. Mm -hmm. Amy, did you find some resistance? You're dealing with something that's so unknown for maybe the generations that came before you. Do your parents understand what you've built and what you do every day? Well, no, they still are a little bit confused. Um, my, my mother did call me when um, Facebook changed its name to Meta and said, is this the thing that you do? <laughs> suddenly was like a light bulb going off. Um, but you know, in, in defense of the generations before us, 
things didn't move quite as quickly as they are now. Um, technology is moving really, really quickly. And so I think I have a tendency not to look back at maybe things that we didn't do well, but to look forward and think, all right, how do we engage the next generations and how do we embrace change? I mean, I think, again, we all, we all have very similar themes and I have children, they're grown now. You're on the other side of it, you're on the other side of it. Um, but change is also generational and I think you know, the strategy of not having this instant gratification that we want to build something greater than ourselves and leave a legacy that's greater than ourselves is a good path. That's lovely. It's, yeah, and I, I agree with, I have children now and I think, wow, my parents did such a great job because this is hard. <laughs> And what am I going to teach them? What am I going to protect them from? How much iPad time do I allow them? These are really basic questions, but they can have such an impact on their lives. And I'm the person who is responsible for that. Shamima, we have one more minute before the uh, next guest. Uh, have you been supported by the generations that came before you, or have you had resistance from them? Honestly, my, my dad has not supported me. He feels he does not understand what I'm doing because he wanted me to become a doctor who is in the hospital, treating patients and all that. And then he finds out that I'm, I'm doing I'm an entrepreneur, um, doing some technology. And he's like, that is not what I, I thought you could become. But I'm like, you have to understand that this is what I love and this is what I believe is going to be the base for me. So I try to sit down and be able to speak to him, but honestly, it's a different generation. But what I believe in is that um, the young generation and the older generation should put up a table so that we can discuss that, hey, daddy, um, what you did then was different from what you're doing now. Right now, everyone is on WhatsApp, um, Facebook, but that was not what was there then. So let us try to be able to work together and be able to change Thank what is you. now. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to have to stop you there. We've come to the end of our session. Our next guest is going to be His Excellency Faisal Al Ibrahim, the Minister of Economy and Planning for Saudi Arabia. So we, uh, we don't want to leave him waiting. I would like to thank you all so much. Thank you all for being here with us and for inviting us to your amazing, amazing kingdom. And I look forward to everyone can speak afterwards um, if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.